Good afternoon, and welcome back to Worked Heat Transfer Examples. Today we're looking at a cross-flow heat exchanger. We know that exhaust gas from a furnace is used to preheat the combustion air supplied to the furnace. The exhaust gas, which has a flow rate of 15 kilograms per second and an inlet temperature of 1,100 degrees Kelvin, passes through a bundle of tubes. Well, the air, which has a flow rate of 10 kilograms per second and an inlet temperature of 300 degrees Kelvin, is in cross flow over the tubes. The tubes are unfinned and the overall heat transfer coefficient is 100 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Determine the total tube surface area required to achieve an air outlet temperature of 850 Kelvin. The exhaust gas in the air may each be assumed to have specific heats of 1,075 joules per kilogram Kelvin. So we know the hot, the hot fluid inlet temperature and mass flow rate. We know the cold fluid inlet temperature and mass flow rate. We know the cold fluid outlet temperature. We're given an effective heat transfer coefficient for the heat exchanger, as well as specific heats for the hot and cold fluid. And we're asked to find the area of the tubes. This is one of the things that's different from heat transfer to thermo. In thermodynamics, we would typically be given the states of the fluid entering and exiting the heat exchanger. But now, in heat transfer, we're asked to design a system. So we need to know how big the heat exchanger needs to be to get the outlet temperatures that we want. We'll make the following assumptions. First, that the system is at steady state, that fluid and material properties are constant, that there are no losses to the surroundings, and that the fluid is mixed on the cold side and unmixed on the hot side, meaning that the hot side is separated into separate tubes or channels, but the cold side is not. So when I do heat transfer problems for heat exchangers, I like to sort of look at this two by two matrix. On the vertical axis, I have my objective. With heat exchanger problems, we're usually trying to find out what the size of the heat exchanger should be, or trying to figure out how much heat is transferred. We have two different methods for co-flow or parallel flow and counterflow heat exchangers. We usually can use the log mean temperature difference method. Otherwise, we use the effectiveness NTU method. In this problem, we're asked to find the area, so we need to size the heat exchanger. And we're also looking at a more complicated heat transfer device, so we need to use the effectiveness NTU method. So now I've selected the proper method, and I can get a process by which to find the answer. The process for effectiveness NTU for heat exchangers, when I'm looking for the sizing, is the following. We'll pick the geometry, find the fluid heat capacities and the ratio, get the effectiveness, use the effectiveness to find NTU, and then use NTU to find the area. First, we need to pick the geometry. We know that we have a cross-flow heat exchanger, that the hot flow is unmixed or separated into tubes, and that the cold flow is mixed or not separated into different tubes. I know eventually I'll need to use a calculated effectiveness to find NTU, so I can find a relationship where NTU is a function of effectiveness. This is dependent on the geometry. In this case, we know we have a cross-flow heat exchanger. We know that one fluid is mixed and one fluid is unmixed, but if I look at my correlations, it depends which is C max and which is C min. So I'll have to find the values for C min and C max. That's the next thing to do on my process flow. So here I remember that fluid heat capacity is M dot times CP. For the hot fluid, I know the mass flow rate and the specific heats. So I can find the fluid heat capacity for the hot fluid. 
I can do the same thing for the cold fluid and I see that the value is higher for the hot fluid and lower for the cold fluid. So the cold fluid is C min and the hot fluid is C max. When I'm trying to find the ratio, big C sub R, I know that I always take the minimum value divided by the maximum value so that I have a fraction that's less than one. In this case, I have two thirds. So now I can know which correlation I'm supposed to use. So C min is mixed and C max is unmixed. And I have a relationship of NTU as a function of effectiveness. In this case, I know CR already, but I don't know the effectiveness. So the next thing I need to do is find effectiveness. When we're sizing heat exchangers with the effectiveness NTU method, we end up finding effectiveness from the definition. The effectiveness is the actual heat transferred by the heat exchanger divided by the maximum heat that's possible to transfer from the heat exchanger. We know the actual heat transfer because in this case, we know the temperature of the cold inlet and the temperature of the cold outlet. We also know the mass flow rates and the specific heat. So I can find the actual heat transfer using information I have on the cold side. Notice here, because I've already calculated the fluid heat capacity, I don't have to use M dot times CP. I put the values that I know into my calculator and I find how much heat is actually transferred by my heat exchanger. But what's the maximum heat transfer that could be transferred by the heat exchanger? In the maximum case, we take the minimum fluid heat capacity and multiply by the biggest temperature difference we can get. In all cases, the biggest temperature you, difference you can get is the hot inlet temperature minus the cold inlet temperature. We know all of these values, so I can put them in my calculator and I can find the maximum heat allowable by this heat exchanger. I put this into my definition for effectiveness and I find that my effectiveness is 0.688. This makes sense because it's a fraction less than one. Now I need to use my NTU correlation to find NTU. The last time I looked at this equation, I saw that I knew big C sub R, but I didn't know effectiveness. But now I've used the definition of effectiveness and I know everything in my equation. I can sub some numbers into my calculator simplify it a little bit and find that the number of transfer units or NTU is 2.25. Now I can use NTU to find the size or area of the heat exchanger. The definition of NTU is the effective heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the area divided by C min. I can rearrange for the area Realize that I know everything I need to know from this equation, plug some numbers into my calculator, and find that the area is 241.9 meters squared. That's what the problem asked me to find. Emily wants you to know that now you have flaming knowledge. Thanks, and I'll see you next time on Worked Heat Transfer Examples.